let's hand the baton over to the Power Automate whiz himself, Ed Gonzalez. If you've been around a while, you've probably seen me do some of this stuff. I tweak it, uh, this presentation as I go. Um, it's intended to be kind of like an intro to Power Automate. Here's some, you know, here's some cool stuff. Here's where to click. Here's how to do some things. Um, but the big message is around how to learn with regards to Power Automate because it's going to take a shift based on how we used to do things and and how I'd like for us to do things in the future, right? A bit about me. Uh, as we mentioned, my name is Ed Gonzalez. I identify as a learner, maker, and fixer. I'm a Microsoft MVP, which doesn't necessarily mean I'm an expert. It just means that I am passionate about the platform. I work with the community a lot. Um, I like helping people. Um, and I evangelize things, so they like that. I'm also a Microsoft certified trainer. I think this is probably like my fourth year doing that. Um, so that's always a hoop. My focus is primarily Power Automate and uh, Dynamics 365. It's kind of where I came from. I'll talk a lot. Or I'll talk a little bit about that as we go. Um, speaking and blogging. So I, I am just now getting back into the conference circuit. Um, used to you know go around to the different conferences and present different sessions and things like that and took a, a two-year hiatus as we were dealing with some other things right um blogging also took a bit of a hiatus because i started a new job about a year and change maybe about a year and a half ago uh working at ey and so now um i think was it uh, bastion or jeremy when you guys were talking about the the power up program I was a business user. I didn't go through the Power Up program, but I was a business user. And now I'm doing full time Power Platform consulting. And I got to tell you, I really enjoy it. Like it, it is, I get that consulting life is probably not for everybody, but I really enjoy it because I'm solving different problems all the time, working in different things. Like there's no shortage of things to do. So I, I think it's a lot of fun. So if you're in that business user space, um, and you're looking to kind of do more with stuff, that's a possible path for you, right? Um, or you can just stay where you're at and get really good at, at the Power Platform and enjoy that stuff. This platform was designed just for you, so enjoy it. We'll talk about that a little bit. My blog is flyingpolymath.com. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Powered by Ed G. Um, and what? We'll go from there. So what is Power Automate? Power Automate is a low code and no code tool, accent on the air quotes, right? Uh, they started out, they came out of the box, um, big words, no code. You know, this is a no code automation tool. People quickly told them, yeah, not so much guys. It's, uh, you know, there's some code here. And to be fair, um, it's about as complex as writing um, Excel, you know, functions, like if you're, confident or pretty okay doing you know indexes or v lookups and or nesting uh, formulas that's about as tough as things can get inside power automate um uses a slightly different language but the the formatting and the the syntax type stuff is pretty much the same the methodologies are the same and again not totally necessary as i go through my demos i'll show you you know, we'll do some pretty cool, uh, moderately useful stuff. Uh, and, and I'll have uh, Giselle keep track of how much code I write. Okay. Um, so the, the whole intent behind it is to, to automate those mundane tasks, those things that are, are high on the manual side, low on the mental side, uh, things that we come in and, and do every morning that we don't necessarily really need to apply a lot of brain power to, maybe not a ton of decision making. I tell the story about how I got into Power Automate. Uh, I was managing a customer service department, you know, about 20 people ish or so. And, um, you know, every morning I would come in and want, because we sold wholesale stuff and we sold retail stuff on Amazon, um, might come in in the morning and I'd see my list of emails from Amazon of the reviews that people left on our products. And I would take all of the, the lower SAR reviews and create trouble tickets inside Dynamics and assign those out to my you know, customer service team. Um, and so when Flow came out, that was what Power Automate used to be called, um, I 
use that as my first thing, right? So I, I basically had it, you know, when, when it triggered off of a new email and looking specifically for emails from Amazon, and then it started taking it apart, figuring out how many stars were in the body of the email. And if it was, you know, three or less, then it would create the ticket inside dynamics. And if it was more than that, then it would just kind of like not do anything, right? Um, point is, though, is I was a business user. I wasn't a developer and I was able to solve a, a real business problem without having to go through, you know, all of the IT hoops or enlist the help of a, a proper developer, any of that stuff, right? I was able to just do the thing right then and there, uh, save myself about a half hour each day which, um, you know, I wasn't paid a whole bunch, but it still adds up, right? When you're talking about ROI. Um, so I'm sure, I'm sure the company is, is recognizing some value out of that still. Um, and the whole point of, you know, Power Automate and a lot of these other connectors, but we'll talk about Power Automate and Power Apps is, is that it's able to connect to a lot of different things, not just Microsoft stuff, right? Um, so yes, I can connect to, you know, OneDrive and Excel and uh, SharePoint and all the usual suspects on the Microsoft stack, but I can also connect to Salesforce, Google, things that we would consider classically, um, you know, Microsoft maybe competitors or not, right? All of those, essentially, if they have an API that I can connect to, I can, I can hit it on Power, Power Automate uh, and Power Apps. So the big kind of learning paradigm shift, right? Going back to my example of, um, you know, when an email came in, I would create a trouble ticket inside Dynamics. Back in the olden days, when I was presenting at conferences, that would be the name of my session, right? I would submit that with a little abstract that said, this is what the thing's about. I'm gonna teach people how to create a flow that when an email comes in, it creates this Dynamics trouble ticket thing. And that would work out great if somebody needed to do exactly that, right? Um, and so what I've come up with is this analogy of the old timey cookie show, cooking shows where somebody would say, this is how you make chickpea butternut squash curry, right? If I had that show, you would, you know, look at this thing and say, oh, I'm totally interested in chickpea butternut squash curry. And you would either watch it or you'd say, ah, you know what? Not so much. I'm not into it. So you'd skip it, right? Same thing on the Power Platform side. If if you didn't need to do exactly, you know, emails into trouble tickets, you'd probably skip that session. So instead, what I try and get people to do is focus on the ingredients, right? So we're gonna focus on the different connectors, the different methodologies, the documentation, the process that we use to kind of build the, the, the flow and it, rather than the finished product. So that way you can look at the different ingredients and take those back to your own kitchen to solve your problems or keeping with the analogy you know you, you can understand the flavor profiles of each of all of these different ingredients the chili paste the basil the water the whatever uh, butternut squash and, and take it back to your own kitchen and make something you do like maybe you're not into butternut squash maybe you'd like to try something different right acorn squash right uh, i don't know but now you're equipped with the information the knowledge you need to kind of say okay you know what I'm going to take this stuff out because it doesn't totally work for me, but I'm going to use this stuff, right? So you've got it kind of all together in one place. And, and the focus is not on that final thing, but the pieces that it took to get us there. And so I'm working with other trainers and also folks like you that are learning the platform so that when you, when you see YouTube videos or sessions at conferences or, you know, meetups like this, you're not just reading the title and saying, yeah, that's something I want to do exactly, and or that that's not something I want to do, and then skipping it. Right? You're you're kind of picking out and saying, you know, is there a chance that there could be something useful for me to take back to you know my own business use case? Okay. Getting into Power Automate now. Uh, this slide is mostly just kind of a reminder for me uh, to make sure I cover all of the things. So I'm going to flip over to my demo screen not the calendar bit, this thing. Okay, so we're gonna go to the Power Automate page and this is the home screen. And I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of walk us through this as if you all have never seen this, right? So if you have seen this, bear with me. Um, I promise there's gonna be some fun stuff at the at the end. Um, I think, was it October that Mary was out? Um, Mary Myers came out, she was, 
when was that? That was October, yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. Oh no, it couldn't have been. It couldn't have been because we were in we were in Orlando, so it was before that. Mm. Yeah, um, September, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, I was thinking that um, she like there was something she presented that was kind of like we weren't sure if it was NDA or not. Um, but anyway, the stuff that I'm going to show you was announced at Ignite in in October, so it's pretty fresh and uh, it's pretty cool. And all things you know going my way. Hopefully, it's been a good day so far. The demo will work and you guys will be impressed and have a lot of fun. Um, but I'm going to come at this like like we haven't seen Power Automate before. And then that way you can kind of, you know, um, maybe if you are familiar with it, you'll see something that you haven't used before. OK, so going to the home page, which is make.powerautomate.com, you log in with your credentials and here you are. You can see that you're greeted uh, quite nicely with your actual name and then some suggested templates. Now, templates are. You know, somebody's decided, hey, this is pretty common. You know, somebody could probably use this. It goes through a bit of a process to make sure that it's validated and not completely wonky, but it 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 works ish, right? And so you can, if you have an idea for for how something should be, meaning like if I have a problem you need to solve, templates are a good place to start, even if it's not a hundred percent. Um, it's a good place for you to kind of jump in and say, see how somebody did something and reverse engineer, right? <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, there is a slight downside that I'll talk about when we get into templates, but you can see that they give you some suggestions. They even break them down a little bit. I'll zoom in. They break them down a little bit so you can see, oh, these templates have something to do with emails. These templates have more to do with files and documents. And then, oh, here's a group for notifications and reminders, right? This isn't all of them. This isn't an all-inclusive list. It's just like a hey, did you know, did you want to try this, right? So like the little little welcome screen, splash screen to get you going. Below that, you can see the learning. I've got a link to the guided learning for Power Automate at the end of my presentation, so you don't have to really take notes, but there's a lot of, a lot of cool stuff in here just for you uh, to learn how to do that. I'm not going to go through all of the pieces uh, here because I have a feeling like a lot of folks have either seen it or if you haven't seen it, um, then this is like kind of like a more, you know, mid-level or intermediate conversation and, and we don't want to spend a lot of time in there. My flows is where you'll see the stuff that you've built or the stuff that other people have built and shared with you. Create, I'll come back to this one, but this is basically where you would start to build the thing. Templates we talked about. Okay, so I'm going to talk about, this is where, um, I'm going to spend a, a moment talking about some of these templates. The thing I don't like about templates is that in order for me to open the hood and look at one, I have to connect to the service that it's using. So in this example, right, save Gmail attachments to a Dropbox folder. Let's say I don't use Dropbox, but I use some other thing that's like Dropbox and there's not a template for it. The minute I click on this guy, it's going to go, oh, OK, so we need to connect to Gmail and we need to connect to Dropbox before you go anywhere. Right. So I can't like pop it open and say, OK, how did they do this thing? Let's say it was kind of complex or something like that. I have to like log into both of these. That's the only downside, I think, to to the templates. Other than that, you can do, you know, it's got a pretty robust search. You could do a search for, you know, Outlook and or like, let's say I do Gmail and OneDrive, right? Hopefully something comes up, right? So let's say instead of Dropbox, I'm using OneDrive and here we are. I've got the same exact template just with OneDrive for business or just plain old OneDrive, right? So templates are cool like that, but I would just say, you know, don't one, don't automatically presume that they're all 100%. And so if it doesn't work, don't, don't feel like it's you that, you know, is doing something wrong there's a good chance the template's broken and that's okay because you know people build these things and iterations and updates and all these things happen and i don't know if they come back and revisit them and and try and fix them right until somebody says hey this thing's not working so if you bump into something that's not working just know that you know we'll take normal troubleshooting steps don't presume hey it's my fault i did something wrong okay and then have, the other, huh? i have a question for you ed yeah in with power bi there's power bi sort of uh, visuals the custom visuals and some of them are yep. like Power BI certified. So you could presumably assume that next month when Power BI has a new update, it won't break. And yep. then there's some that are just like, you know, they're free. You, you think what you get. Is there that same sort of certification for these templates? 
not for the templates but okay. for the next thank you for the segue for connectors yes there is okay, okay. so when uh for templates itself like you, i think you can I don't see, yeah, it doesn't show the author. So I think there's a presumption that pretty much all the templates have been vetted to a certain point, mm -hmm. but um, the robot overlords, as I affectionately call them, um, you know, the, the folks at Microsoft, like, I mean, they're people, right? And, you know, if there's a template that just isn't ever used, um, they may see that, um, but the one person that uses it and says, hey, this is broken, Microsoft's not going to know until that person says it's not broken. A lot of right. times what happens, especially for new users who are typically the ones using the templates, right? They automatically feel like, oh, this it, this thing is working 100%. I did something wrong, right? And so that's why I spend time with the messaging saying, hey, if you run into something, there's a good chance it's not you, right? It could be you. I'm not saying it's not you. I'm just saying... <laughs> It's it you know don't automatically assume it's you right so so that's that's where I, I'm at with the the whole template thing now for the connectors aspect yes there absolutely is a, a distinction between you know all of these what we'll call independently published connectors right which are all these red ones thank you for Microsoft for putting those way at the top and then all of the kind of official Microsoft sanctioned ones, right? So I've got it zoomed in right now, but right now there's over 800 connectors, right? That's a bit of a thing. There's a lot of these. And basically what folks can do is they come in here and, and they go through a process. They say, hey, this site's got an API. Um, for those of you that do presenting, like I noticed Sessionize has a, an independently published connector which is something we use a lot when we're, um, you know, applying to speak at conferences, or if I'm running a conference, I'll use ses session eyes to kind of weed through all of the different submissions and, and choosing, you know, who goes where, things like that. But anyway, point is somebody will build, you know, build a connector, go through a process, and now it's quote unquote independently published. Aside from the 800 or more than 800 that you've got between the independently published stuff and then the officially sanctioned Microsoft stuff, you can also create a custom connector, right? So that would just be within your own organization, doesn't go out in the world. So if, if you've got an API that's an internal thing, you can connect to that, do some things, whatever. Um, if, you, if that's the thing you're into, like this isn't the talk for that, but if that's the thing you're into, just Google, you know, Power Automate, uh, custom connectors, right? So it's custom connectors, independent in independent published connectors, and then the regular Microsoft sanction one. The thing to keep in mind about all of these is that it runs a spectrum, right? So we've got, you know, dad jokes, or in this case, uh, Chuck Norris uh, jokes, uh, all the way to things that are completely business use case, like absolutely got to use it, right? So when my friend like Daniel Laskowitz creates a Chuck Norris joke connector and gets that published, not a lot of huge use cases for that. I'm not saying it's, you know, not possible. Maybe somebody's got a legitimate, you know, business use case for dad jokes or cat videos. I don't know, the, you know, morale. Um, but, you know, there, if there's an API out there, Somebody, you know, has maybe created a connector out there. So when when I have a problem to solve, the first thing I do is I'll come up here and say, okay, these are the connections that I would need to do the thing. And then I would start looking at the documentation for that stuff. Okay. So as an example, um, the one I was doing today was somebody came to me with a problem that says, hey, I, I've got a, a, a group chat in Twitter that I want to move over to WhatsApp, right? For whatever reason, they're not happy with Twitter right now. So I come to here and say, you know, can I automate this? So I look up the Twitter connector and very first thing that comes up is all the different templates that are available out there, right? But what I'm interested in is this link. All of the connectors have either this link or something similar. Um, and I click on see documentation. You'll see like some of the Microsoft ones like if you look at Teams, I think it says like learn more instead of see documentation and it kind of takes you to the same place. Um, but what I'm specifically looking for, none of this, I, I don't understand what any of this stuff is, right? Like a lot of this is all like dead heavy things and I don't really get it. Um, but the thing that I'm usually interested in is I just click down to actions 
and I can see all of the actions that are available to me out of the box connection, right? And so I can see here that getting getting the members of a group chat is not on the list, right? So doing doing things the quote unquote easy way using Power Automate um, is is probably not the path I'd be able to go with that particular problem, but if I wanted to do something else like uh, post, you know, get get all of my followers and post a tweet tagging all of my followers saying, hey, I'm moving over to WhatsApp or Mastodon or whatever, um, I can automate that because I've got actions here that say get my followers and then also post a tweet. Right? I don't know if the tagging thing works, but that's just an example of how I approach some of the documentation stuff. And then here you can see over on the left side of this whole documentation section, these are all the different connectors, right? So I can just kind of scroll through here and see all the limitations, all the things that I can do with regards to this stuff, right? Um, and, and I guess, it, you know, for those of you that are kind of like in the more intermediate advanced thing, it is kind of important to read these things, right? And, and go through these. Interestingly enough, because um, like one of the things that I did recently was kind of like a survey tool using Microsoft Teams and worked great in testing. I used dynamics at the back end, used campaigns and member campaign members to figure out who the survey was going to go to, figured out all of this cool stuff, mapped it out, had flow charts and circles and arrows on the back, um, the whole nine yards, um, and did all the testing and everything was great. And then we went to kind of roll it out and I, I hit some throttling limits within Teams and it had nothing to do with Power Automate. It was because the team's interface only allows so many hits on it per, you know, hour, minute, whatever. And so I was hitting that and it wouldn't matter if I was using Power Automate or, you know, Logic Apps or any other thing. It just basically says, nope, can't, can't go past this. And so I had to kind of throttle things and stagger them out. So I'd send a question and then wait 12 and a half seconds and send another question. And so that way I didn't hit that throttling limit. So... 200 300 level folks read read those things the, the throttling limits right so um, but for folks that are just kind of getting started and doing this stuff i'd say just focus on the triggers and actions can i do this thing right what's the star wars thing i got a question for you ed yeah what's up if that action's not available on say on the twitter connector yep can you use the twitter connector as the baseline and just write that little bit of code because the api probably offers it yeah, so it's just what, not wired up. So, like, how do you have to build a whole new connector just for that? Or how does that work? Yeah, so so that's probably the best way to go. And so, so I'll give you two answers depending on if you're 100 or 200. You know, if you're beginning or intermediate, right? So, if you're beginner, then I'd say just create. You know, check out some videos, create a custom connector that is just for you know that Twitter that hits those API endpoints, right? Um, and and that's. That's pretty easy. It sounds scarier than it really is, but it's pretty easy. Um, there's a lot of great videos on there on how to how to do those custom connectors. If you were like a beginner or let's say, I'm sorry, intermediate advanced, what you could do is just do an HTTP call. Like you wouldn't even have to create the connector. You would just do an HTTP call to the, that API endpoint um, to get the same exact uh, effect of, of creating the connector. Right. Um, and then additionally, you could create the custom connector and put forward that for publishing. And maybe they add that endpoint to the actual official Twitter connector. Maybe they don't. I don't know. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. OK, where were we? We were talking about um, the different connectors, right? OK, so any questions so far outside of that stuff? I think we're good. OK. So the rest of this stuff, like I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about. Um, so monitor, AI builder, process advisor, solutions are definitely like an enterprisey thing. Like if you're going to start doing this stuff for work, like read up on some of that stuff. But none of this is like you need to know this stuff in order to play around, right? We want to get to a point where you're the whole intent of this conversation, right? Is I want to make it less intimidating or less scary or whatever, and I want to make you more curious about this thing, right? So whatever that looks like, that's the intent. That's the goal, all right? 
So going up to create, because we want to build a thing, right? Um, this is, these are my options. Again, I've got the templates. You can see they're grouped here, whether it's, you know, top picks, remote work, email notifications, you know, they're all grouped in certain ways. Cool. Um, I also have these options for automated instant scheduled. I'm going to skip over this one and then desktop flow and then process advisor. These two, I, I call them Bruno because we're not going to talk about those, right? Um, these three, uh, we'll, we'll chat about in, um, uh, yeah, these three we'll chat about right now, and then we'll come to this guy. This is kind of like the, the whole point of tonight's talk. Um, but I want to set a baseline. We'll go to these. Automated is that, you know, when something happens over here, go do something over here, right? When an email comes in, create a ticket in Dynamics, right? And you're not limited to just one. Like when I have to have one trigger, right? So when that thing happens over here, but I can have a ton of actions after that. You know, create a trouble ticket in Dynamics. Um, post something on Twitter, uh, go, you know, add something to my shopping list, whatever you want to do, right? So you can have that all be as part of one flow. Um, that's the automated thing, right? Instant is like, I got to push a button. I got to physically interact with this thing to make something happen, right? And then a scheduled cloud flow, exactly what it sounds like. It, it essentially means I'm going to have this thing run at 6 a.m. tomorrow or 6 a.m., every day every other month every you know two weeks whatever on the first and the 15th however you want to do it that's what that is so it's just creating something all three of these ultimately open up a wizard right um and i'll tell you like little trade you know pro secret whatever um i always no matter which one i click on i click on skip because they all take you to the same place it's just do you want to go through the action of creating it in the wizard or do you want to just like get to the canvas and do the thing? And that's typically where I'm at. If you're a wizard person, no judgment, totally do the thing. Add a name, choose what the trigger is and click create. And it takes you essentially to the same screen just with that stuff already there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to just do a manual trigger real quick. And I'm thinking through you know, the demo that I'm going to do as I'm building it. Great work, Ed. Appreciate that. Um, but I'm going to, you know, let's just do uh, the same thing that I did earlier today. Uh, we're going to do a post to Twitter. Okay. And um, so let me see where are we at. Post a tweet. There we go. So it's already got, uh, it's already got me connected. So I clicked on this ellipse up here. You can go down to uh, my connections here and see what different connections are are available to you. If you've never connected to Twitter before, it's going to pop up with a login prompt and say, okay, give us your credentials for Twitter so that we can post uh, a tweet on your behalf. And that's something important to know, right? Anything you do, you have to have login credentials, right? So anything that any site that you're connecting to, any you know, any kind of action that you're taking in Salesforce or Dynamics or whatever, you got to log in as you. So, or I mean, as somebody, right? And so whatever login you're using, that's what's getting your permission. So if you're new to the platform, don't be afraid or, or be convinced that you're going to, you know, do something that you're not supposed to do, right? Um, so like, if I don't have permissions to delete records in Dynamics, I'm not going to be able to do that with Power Automate, right? Um, but if I did have permissions to delete records in Power Automate, or I'm sorry, delete records in Dynamics, I'll be able to do it really quickly with Power Automate. So essentially, this platform allows us to screw up faster, right? So just pay attention to that as you're building things, but know that you like anything that you do out in the world, you can do here just faster. Um, and conversely, like you can't do anything in, in Power Automate that you can't do out in the world, right? So um, here's another test. Uh, We've seen that with like Teams message invites or emails or, or meeting invites. Where... Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's <laughs> it's it happens. Like, okay, yeah. so here's here's a great example, right? So one of the demo uh, things that I did this morning was I had people send me an email uh, with the, the subject line weather, right? 
And what I would do is I would get their location from the Office 365 users, then use the weather connector to get the weather from the city that they're in, and then post to Teams what their weather is, right? That one was already, I had that in the can. I had built it the last time. Everything was cool. No big deal. And so when I turned, the moment I turned that on, that sucker went through my inbox and said, okay, these are all new unread messages. And so I'm getting the weather for all, you know, 700 something emails in your inbox. So I, the moment I saw that happening, you know, I, I turned it off real quick. Um, and I still got like a hundred posts inside team saying, Hey, here's the weather in <laughs> Dallas and whatever. So just know that yeah, these things happen. And I mean, this is my job, folks, you know, like I should know better, but, you know, I'm still do things and, and move fast. And I think people are pretty understanding and forgiving of it. But just like I said, you know, you, you can't do anything you're not, you can't do out in the real world. I could just as easily create a hundred meeting requests, right. And just send those all at the same time. Or how many people have seen that whole reply all thing, right. <laughs> so that can happen out in the world. So it can happen here. Uh, just faster. All right. So I'm not, I'm just uh, posting another tweet uh, and that's it. Right. So I click save and I'll post it. I got a lot of interaction from folks uh, after I, I did that. So uh, when I did it this morning, so I'll post that and off it goes. Right. So I just, all I did was click on test and uh, you know, clicked on a couple of buttons that said, you know, are you sure? Are you really, really sure? And here you can see green check mark, green check mark. That guy is out in the world live. So let's pull up Twitter. Um, most of my Twitter stuff is work stuff. Um, there's a chance that, you know, it's not, especially given the a lot of the activities going on today. Oh, I'm not logged in on that one. Let me go over here. Sorry, I was using profiles. That's why Twitter didn't know who I was. Okay, so here we go. Here's here's my the the test thing that I did, right? So you can see, I did a thing. I created a, a test tweet, and um, <laughs> thanks, Matthew. Um, and so I created this thing, and and it was all automated. So that you know, not a huge use case because what did I have to do? I had to manually type in the the tweet text, but. Let's say I had a step in here that that uh, you know went and got the weather, and so now um, I'm going to say, uh, well, let's get the the forecast for today, and the location is you know where I'm at, and then now I can come in here and say today's weather in. Let's see, location is, and then conditions. So I don't, I'm not going to post this because I think people get tired of, of me posting weird things on Twitter, but I'm, I'm grabbing dynamic data and, and using a different connector to do the, the thing. Again, we're talking about the ingredients, right? Not the specific final dish, you know, probably not a lot of business cases to grab the weather and post that on Twitter, right? Um, so, so that's a good one. So now, any questions before I, I, I switch gears? Are you at the mercy of the speed for each connector right there? Say the Twitter one took five minutes to post. Yeah. All right. So it's it's not necessarily you are at the mercy of somebody, right? Your robot overlords, essentially. Um, mm -hmm. So the biggest problem is going to be what's your licensing like with Microsoft, right? Um, because especially if you're doing an automated flow where like, remember, if something happens over here, go do something over here. Uh, some of the lower licenses will only be polling every 15 minutes or so, right? So if I'm expecting something to be real time, 15 minutes is a really long time, right? Especially like yes. as an example, I'm doing a demo and I'm saying, okay, this is, this is how this thing is going to work. I click on the button, it adds a road to Dataverse, and now I'm waiting for that approval to kick off, right? That's a mm -hmm. long 15 minutes. Um, so it depends on what your licensing looks like. Licensing is not an expertise of mine um but that's one aspect of it um if you're seeing other delays check your throttling like if you did a kajillion things just before that it might slow you down right but for the most part everything that i've been doing is pretty instant like i haven't seen a lot of details with it excuse me or a lot of trouble with it thank you yeah any other questions i'm going to shift gears real quick i'm um, not seeing any of the chat okay 
And what time did I start? Like, where am I at? Because I was thinking I started at five, but that's not possible, right? I think about, about five fifteen. Five fifteen. Yeah, okay. Okay. Cool. So we're kind of we're kind of on track. Now, here's the two big things, right? And I'm actually going to show them in reverse order, um, just so that um, I can keep it more relevant. So let's say that I wanted to, um, instead of having you know the the um, the stuff that I had in there, right? The weather and and that that whole phrasing. Um, I wanted to have a certain you know date in there. Um, before I do that, though, I got to grab something real quick. Uh, did I save it? I did. Okay, so I'm, I got to grab the thing I'm going to show you is is when it comes to formatting data in Power Automate, it is the experience is less than ideal. Right. Um, it it is typically um, a lot of formatting. You know, here we go. So here's here's the date field. This is what a date looks like in in typical JSON. And and if you worked in SharePoint, like this is what dates look like on the back end. It's not super fun. Um, it's in what's called the UTC standard format. I think is one of the words for it. And the Z at the end means that this time is actually in, it's at UTC or uh, coordinated universal time or Greenwich mean time, which is essentially what time is it in London right now? Because that's the center of the universe, right? Um, and so we are eight hours behind that. But let's say um, I wanted the date to be presented in Twitter in not that gross format, right? I wanted to say the weather for, this particular date is, you know, um, this thing, right? Well, if I just grab the date here, it's going to be that that gross bit that you saw before. It's gonna it's gonna look like. Let me pull up Notepad. Boop. So it's gonna look like this, right? Which is gross. Nobody nobody knows what that is, and so we want to switch that. Um, so w one of the things that they've added, and I'm going to use compose, which is compose is basically just a box, right? I can put in text if I wanted to. I can put in expressions. I'm going to use an expression. And then um, if I go over here, so this is going to look different depending on if you've got preview features turned on or not. But what you're looking for is something that says format data by examples, right? And so it pulls up this window and says, what is the thing that you want to format? Well, I want to format. We're going to go with uh, the timestamp. And it says, OK, what is what does the data look like? So I, that's why I went back and grabbed this thing. Right. And so my desired output is essentially I want it to look like this. Right. And so that lets uh, Power Automate know this is this is what I've got to work with, and this is what we want it to look like. You can see it. It gave me suggestions, right? Do I want just the date? Do I want the time, right? And so if I click on Get Expression, it gives me you know this thing here that I can just I can either click on Copy to Keyboard or just click Apply, and it drops it right in. So That's you nice. can, yeah, I think it's great. Okay. You can do the same kind of thing for texts, right? So like, let's say I'm, I'm looking at email addresses and they're all like first name dot last name and I wanna change that to just first name or, or last name comma first name. I could do that. I could, you know, I can format numbers. Now, everybody that's been in here before knows that I could just do, um, you know, format date time, right? Uh, so we'll, we'll come in here and see, let me just do this. Here we go date time. So if, if I if I do convert time zone and my base time, so I, I would put my base time in and my source and my destination were the same thing. And then I could choose, you know, what I want that to look like. Right. I could do that without writing an expression, but I can also do it here. Now you've got one more tool in your box. Right. The other thing, the other reason that this is useful is a quick comment here. Ed, could you yeah, zoom yeah. in just a tick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let me go in. You can also that hold down the control on Ed's screen if you're um if you have a laptop screen, you can just kind of yep. go so zoom we, in it, like that, or you can hold the control in the mouse wheel. 
Anytime you're in Teams, if, if you're watching a screen share or something like that, you can hold down the control key and do that. We'll both do it, and then that way you can zoom in gigantic if you want. <laughs> um, so the, the problem with, with the zoomy bit, right, is like my preview feature expression builder doesn't show it. So I'll just hover over it. But you can see now what the expression looks like, right? So if I wanted to learn about expressions, this is a good way for me to do that because I can see what's happening, right? I can see they use format date time, then they use this parse date time and 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 they split the date time, you know, in on the period or comma and did some other things, but it gives me an opportunity to kind of see how things are done, right? And then uh, I wasn't sure what part you wanted to zoom in on, but this is, you know, this is the no code option, right? So the base time option, I would just choose uh, the timestamp I would choose uh, the the original one is is UTC, so I could do you know things in two steps, where I'm going to not only format the time, they'll make it look like I want, but also uh, get it in the right time zone. So here's Pacific, and then the short date pattern, and so now I can grab either one of those and put them here. So I can either take the output of my compose, or I can take the output of my converted time, and they'll both produce similar results okay so that's one format data by examples that's that even though my guy is in preview you don't have to be in preview to to take advantage of that it'll just look a little bit different uh, let me pull this over here because if i go over to my work tenant uh, that is not in preview and so i can show you what that looks like over there actually let me Make sure I don't have anything confidential out there. Right? Create, and then here. Perfect. Okay. So if if you're like normal and you don't have like these these experimental features turned on, uh, when you want to do the um, format data by example, you just click on the expression right here, and it's right here up at the top. And it gets you to the same exact place, right? So you just pick the thing that you want to um, to model on, and then you put what kind of data you're expecting to come in, and then what you want it to look like on the way out. Okay. So that's the first one. And then um, the other thing I wanted to show you was back over here on create. Go away. So we alluded to this before, right? You describe it. AI builds it or Al builds it. I'm going to guess that they mean AI. Um, and so what this looks like is exactly what it sounds like, right? I describe something that I want it to do, and it'll try and piece together a flow for me. Now, keep in mind, this thing is a baby, right? It's brand new to the world. It's still kind of in preview. So if I were to do the thing that I did earlier this morning, which was, um, when an email comes in, get the user's location and get the weather and then post in Teams, right? Like if I did something like that, it's going to break. It's going to be like, I, I have no idea what you just said, right? Because it's too complex. It's, it, what? <laughs> I did this this morning, right? And it did like it totally like broke. But let's let's play along, Ed. Let's see what happens. Okay, so here it gives me a couple of different options, right? So it says when a new email arrives, and then it gives you like all of these different connectors, right? I don't know what what this one is. There's two uh, different actions here. This one's three, or it just has one. Let's see what happens, right? So anyway, I described something pretty complex. I did the same exact thing this morning. Somebody's on it. They said, hey, this guy's asking for something. Do you know who he is? He's an MVP. We need to make sure that it, it works next time. And so here we are. Um, so then we can see that it says, when a new email arrives, get my profile. So that's kind of broken. That's not exactly what I was asking converts HTML to text. I'm not sure what that step is. Get the forecast for tomorrow and then post the chat and channel. So like templates, right? It may get you 90% there, right? It, it, so now it's up to you to kind of to, to tweak things a little bit. 
But let's take a look. It, it Just like the templates, it wants to connect to everything. I've got green check marks all the way down, right? I have no idea what this is going to look like, but I'm going to click next. OK, uh, this is all. So what it does in the next screen is it says these are all the required fields that that I have. So you need to fill these out. I'm going to say Imperial because I'm in Portland. And then you want to post in Teams as either a user, as a Flowbot, or maybe a, a virtual agent, which is that's a cool thing now. That's new. Um, OK, and so the team's recipient, I'm just going to put, um, you know, myself. OK, and then the team's message for now, I'm just going to put test. I'm going to go back and fill that in later and do some stuff. And I click I click on create flow. Now, keep in mind, I described something pretty complex, multi step, right? All of the other demos that I've done so far have been when an item is added in SharePoint, send me an email. That's it, right? When something happens over here, go do a thing over here. Now, looking at this thing, right? When an email comes in, um, it's getting my profile, which is not what I want. I want it to get the user's profile. Now, the reason I know that getting the user's profile is not going to work is because it gets that information from the Office 365 users connector, and none of y'all are on my tenant, right? So I won't know what city you're in. So we're just going to leave it as get my profile for now. HTML text. So it's going to take the body of the email, convert that to HTML. In my mind right now, I'm thinking I don't need this step. Get the forecast for tomorrow based on the location. OK, so that's wrong. We're going to change that to city from my profile. And so now um, we can say the weather here is and then grab the output from um that right we, so we now, got a question for you ed yeah, uh, yeah. Jeff what? asked what if you asked for the for the sender's location um so jeff how how do you envision that happening right so if if somebody sent me an email now i've got to have a conversation to to get their location right i'm not saying it's not possible but let's say um, let's say we're exact scenario is what we've got right now, right? You guys aren't on my tenant, um, and so I need to get your location somehow. So I could, in effect, um, send an email back saying, "Hey, what city are you in?" Right, and then manage the threading that that keeps track of that conversation and triggers the email when um, you know that second email comes back with the city location. That's a possibility. Very much like when you go to a website, they can find your your IP address and they can map that to physical location, right? But you've made that call out to the website, so they have that available. Yeah, you want, you yeah. Provided that in this case, yeah. That's yeah, cool. yeah. So, so yeah. So that's I mean that's one aspect. Now, if we were all in the same tenant, right? Then then the thing that I've got over here would work fantastically. Let me pull this up, right? So here. When a new email comes in, I get the user profile from the from person, like whoever sent me the thing, get the current weather based on that person's city, and then post in something. I, it changed languages on me. That's really cool. Good job, Microsoft. Um, but post in that particular team, if somebody wants to translate that for me, I'm super happy. Um, and then does the thing, right? So if we were all in the same organization, that's what you could do. Now, let's say we're back to, you know, back to the original situation where, you know, we're not in the same tenant or we don't know. Power virtual agents are an option, right? We can have a conversation that says, that's that's great, Jeff. How do, you know, I'd love to get the weather for you. What city are you in or what location are you in? And that was one of the first chatbots I built actually was something where it, it asked for location and then would get the weather and then sometimes a, a cool place to eat using the Yelp API. So anyway, um, so I could like now that I know that this thing is superfluous, I can take that HTML text thing out and essentially um, I've got a, a working working flow that from a pretty complex description, right? And I didn't I didn't type any code. Uh, I didn't make anything weird. I didn't you know, go into Visual Studio, crank something out. 
the only thing that's kind of weird about this is it's just it's getting my profile instead of somebody else's. But if we were on the same tenant, it wouldn't be an issue. What Very do you nice. think? Yeah. That's cool. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. Does, does it turn into like, is it, does it output a final code that you can look through? Oh, like, okay. So like you're saying, can I draw, like, can I open up the back end of a flow? and yeah. figure out what it looks like and things like yeah, that. Yeah, like if you were to build this yourself or there's something like that. In Power BI, I'm thinking of Power BI, you can use the interface and you can remove columns. You can you really use the interface for a lot of stuff, which is really great. And yeah. it generates a whole bunch of code that you can yeah. pretty much copy and paste from one thing to the other. Is there that yeah. sort of full code viewing that you can see after? I, I want to say Yes, but only because a good friend of mine, John Liu, says that all flows are stored as JSON someplace, okay, yeah. right? Yeah. So so because I'm not what I call a classically trained developer, I can't say emphatically, heck yes, dude, like it and and here's how you do it. But um I know I know John and some other people have built some tools that kind of help you manage your flows. But I don't know if it gets to the point where you can open it up in VS Code or whatever, and then start making changes to it, and then upload it back and have those changes show up in the UI, right? Like I don't, yeah. I don't know if it's that robust. That's interesting. It's all JSON at the end, which I'm learning. <laughs> yeah. Get, get whatever you're doing, there's a good chance to. There's some JSON running in the back. There's no shortage of things to Not learn, all of right? It. I mean, a Power BI file is all JSON as well. Yeah. 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 And the entire thing. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, so those were the two biggies, right? So like pretty much in like like you, I am amazed because I really didn't expect that thing to work. I thought, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna have to dial it back a notch and do the whole, you know, SharePoint email thing. But it turns out they're learning really fast. So appreciate that. Thanks, Microsoft. Um, okay, any other questions before I jump back to my presentation? Nope. Which all good. Okay, which actually isn't much, right? So there's not uh, much content after this. Um, let me see if I can do this right. Every time I do this, it, it takes me. Hey, right, look at that. Okay, so uh, here are some links. Uh, Power Automated Guided Learning. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll flip this over to Jeremy and Bastian. Uh, as a PowerPoint slideshow, so that way you'll have all of these links uh, at your service. Um, the guided learning is pretty cool. The reference guide for functions, I'd say that's more of an intermediate advance. So like when you get to a point where you're going to start writing expressions, this has a list of all of the functions, all of the syntax, all of like what the input should look like, what the output should look like, all of the things. So it's a super useful link. I keep it uh, kind of bookmarked because I, I look back to it a lot when I'm doing expressions. My blog, again, flyingpolymath.com, and then the community, which uh, you were just talking about as far as moving everything over. And then uh, different ways to reach me. I'd say best bet here would be um, not this email address. I forgot to change it, but the edg at flyingpolymath.com. But you can email me here. That's fine. Um, Twitter, powered by edg. LinkedIn, Ed Gonzalez, and then Flying Polymath. And then this QR code is for a survey. Um, if, if you have any trouble ask, accessing it, let me know. Um, but if you can fill that out and let me know, you know what you liked, what you didn't like, that helps me make this thing a little bit better.